Ukrainian forces expose secret dispute between Wagner owner and Russian command is the infamous private military company doomed? Ukraine's bold move to thwart Russia's master plan in Bakhmut, will it work? Norway and U.S. to provide Ukraine with air defense systems amid growing threats. Ukrainian soldiers suffering in silence, refusing to leave front lines despite severe mental health issues. Russian military resorting to desperate measures as missile stockpile critically low, Ukraine intel reveals. Who will win the battle for Bakhmut? What desperate measures are the Russian military taking? Why is the U.S. funding Ukraine? Let's answer on these questions in this video. Ukrainian army destroys most of Wagner PMC near Bakhmut, military spokesperson says. The Ukraine has intercepted communications indicating that Yevgeny Prigozhin, the owner of Wagner, is engaged in an ongoing dispute with the Russian command and Valery Gerasimov, the chief of the general staff. According to Cheravadii, Prigozhin wishes to maintain his military and political identity, but was prevented from doing so due to the Ukrainian armed forces' skill in almost completely destroying Wagner's group, which suffered significant casualties, mostly around Bakhmut. Cheravadii has also previously stated that the Russian invasion forces have lost tens of thousands of soldiers in the battle for Bakhmut and that Wagner's ignominious history is coming to an end in the near future. Russia's best units pinned down in Bakhmut battle an advisor to Volodymyr Zelensky, Mikhail Podolyak, has stated that the ongoing conflict over the ruined city of Bakhmut is causing Russia's top units to become bogged down and lose effectiveness in advance of a planned Ukrainian counteroffensive. Despite the town being the site of the bloodiest battle of the war, Ukraine has decided to continue the fight there as Moscow seeks to secure its first victory in over six months. In an interview with Italy's La Stampa newspaper, Mr. Podolyak noted that Russia has changed tactics by concentrating a significant number of its trained military personnel, along with remnants of its professional army and private companies, in and around Bakhmut. As a result, Ukraine has two objectives, to diminish Russia's capable personnel as much as possible and to engage them in key tiresome battles to disrupt their offensive, enabling them to allocate their resources elsewhere for a spring counteroffensive. Russia's winter offensive, involving hundreds of thousands of reservists and mercenaries, has targeted Bakhmut as its primary objective. While they have captured the eastern part of the city and its outskirts to the north and south, they have thus far failed to encircle the Ukrainian defenders. During a visit to Kiev on Friday, Norwegian Defense Minister Bjorn Ariel Graham announced that Norway, in conjunction with the United States, will deliver two NASAMS air defense systems to Ukraine. According to the minister, Ukraine has a pressing need to defend itself against missile attacks, and Norway will assist by training Ukrainian personnel in the operation and maintenance of the system. Norway has previously assisted the United States with the delivery of U.S. NASAM systems to Ukraine. In October of last year, the United States supplied two NASAM systems to Ukraine, and Canada also provided military aid of $500 million in November, with a significant portion going toward the purchase of one NASAM's unit and missiles for Ukraine. Negotiations have also taken place between the United States, NATO allies, and several Middle Eastern countries regarding the transfer of NASAMs to Ukraine. Raytheon Company CEO Gregory J. Hayes has indicated that the goal is to send air defense systems to Kiev within three to six months, followed by the United States supplying new NASAMs to the Middle East over the next two years. Ukrainian soldiers are haunted by nightmares and having mental breakdowns, but they are not leaving the front lines to seek care. Reports from the Washington Post indicate that Ukrainian soldiers are refusing to leave the front lines, where they face high casualties and continuous influxes of Russian reinforcements to seek assistance for a range of mental health issues. Those that do seek help are quickly sent back into combat. These soldiers report experiencing nightmares, trauma, stress, insomnia, and guilt. 
Despite experiencing severe mental health issues, Ukrainian forces have largely remained in combat. Some soldiers are able to seek treatment or see their families, but are quickly sent back into battle. Others are hesitant to leave the front lines to get care in the first place. Ukrainian troops have reported a comparative lack of reinforcements available to replace them, which is exacerbated by Russia's continued deployment of troops and Wagner Group members in battle. This situation exhausts Ukrainian manpower. Mental health discussions remain taboo in Ukraine, especially for soldiers, leaving soldiers on the front lines unwilling to talk about their mental health even as they suffer from post-traumatic stress and trauma. According to the Post, soldiers often view discussing their mental health as inflicting pain and suffering on others. Some soldiers struggle with nightmares about the horrors of war, which cause them to experience panic attacks and poor sleep. Others suffer from survivors' guilt as they mourn fallen comrades. For example, one Ukrainian service member suffers from nightmares about his tank commander who was burned alive, while another has terrifying dreams of stepping on another landmine and losing his other leg. In February, the Ukrainian government reported that more than 60% of its soldiers suffer from post-traumatic stress disorders. The World Health Organization estimates that around 10 million Ukrainians, or one in four, may suffer from mental health issues due to the war. These staggering statistics are due in part to strained medical services and hospitals where physical injuries take priority. The conflict in the eastern Donbass region has stalled one year after the war started, and this region is home to some of the worst fighting yet. Insider reported in late February that the average life expectancy of soldiers along the eastern front lines, dubbed the meat grinder, is about four hours. As per Ukraine's intelligence agency, a significant missile assault was launched by Russia against Ukraine on March 9th using missiles that were produced within a month. The Russians are continuing their missile terror, but considering the lack of high-precision missile weapons that they possess now, we can say that they have been accumulating their forces over the course of a month, including through production, said Andriy Yusov, a representative from Ukraine's intelligence press service. He explained that in reality, the missiles used by the Russian military to strike Ukrainian transformers on March 9th were produced by the Russian military industrial complex in the past month. Yusov clarified that Russia's stocks of various missile weapons are critically low, and the period between attacks is due to the fact that Russia is attempting to recoup ammunition costs through production, but they cannot produce enough quantities. The Russian military reportedly has only 7% of the calibers that were available at the beginning of the full-scale aggression. Yusov stated that even with production, they are unable to replenish those costs. On March 9th, Russia fired 81 missiles of varying types at Ukraine, and air defense successfully shot down 34 of the 48 cruise missiles that were capable of being intercepted. 